Hello and welcome, this is Alchemist X, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about Genesis protagonists mostly, and that's because we are at the tail end of the farming for the Enlightenment shards for the characters. Hopefully, just with the huge amount of shards, even if it is RNG, you got something that's helping you out raising characters that you want to raise, because there is quite a large pool of them, and many of them are very, very good. Uh, so that I'm just going to go over like Emil all the way through Ignacio, basically the characters they have the unique totem materials and that all share the memento group for the genesis protagonist so that does not include dark mirror and dark nix i probably should have included them now that i think about that but i already recorded that segment um they do have their own unique materials but they don't fit into the memento leader skill so something to keep in mind i do think both of them are, are very good damage dealers especially if you don't have magic in that element they could definitely be worth raising but then aside from that Link Amane has been announced. They made a Twitter post about it, and then you probably saw in the announcements for the next set of main story stuff, her design has been released. So that's going to be on September 1st, and I would expect her to be a Thunder or High Thunder unit, and then presumably a Slash unit because she's got a sword. And I assume they're going to borrow some elements of Celis's kit. That's just what I would expect. Um, and so I would expect her to be, you know, if, even if she's not meta defined, I'd expect her to be very, very good. Even the least impactful protagonist link units are still very, very good. So, you know what to expect there. Tagape, 20 step, another 9 step for the secondary memento. Presumably another link unit will rerun aside that. And then we'll see what else is available while Tagape is active. Because sometimes that makes banners that you wouldn't normally want to do worth doing just because of the huge discount and huge even huger potential discount that you can get so without out of the way let's go ahead and take a look at the genesis protagonist units and my overall thoughts on them okay so let's jump into the genesis protagonist so we'll start with emil she's the most unique situation wise so i think that makes sense also i'm in somewhat of a unique situation when it comes to her because one i don't have the original version of emil only genesis protagonist i don't have and then, two, there's a situation with the Link unit, because she's the only one that has one. And because Emil's shards are still very, very scarce, and you might find yourself not wanting to spend gems in order to get her fully enlightened so you can do the Link process to get Link Emil going, you might be in a spot where you're better off just getting the shards that you can of of Emma Link, Max Limit Breaker, and then actually go for Enlightenment shards of her. There may be a banner that comes with a selector, maybe 270, maybe more if you're lucky, and that might end up being more efficient than utilizing the Link function. It's kind of silly, but it, that could be a, a real thing. Now, I'm not going to make her a huge priority, but I do think of her as something of a long-term project. Emma Link does do a lot of things that I like. She's got a very strong reactive, she's got the ability to self-quicken, and then several of her moves are dependent on that. She can do some alchemy down stuff. Just overall, I think she, her kit is very, very solid. You still see her in arena sometimes, so I, I like that. I like her survivability, and then water magic is, is always something I feel like I could use more of. When it comes to regular Emil, I just think that she's, for the most part, power slash feature crept. She did some magic, some debuffs, some healing, but you can get those in, in other more efficient ways, which is a little bit sad. I was kind of hoping she would get some upgrades, and you know, maybe she will. I wouldn't rule that out completely yet, just because every other protagonist has. They haven't all been equal, but they've all gotten some kind of an upgrade. So, insofar as that, it can be still be 100% worth raising Emil, especially if you're doing it so you can link the link version. Okay, let's move on to Inaku. Now, when it comes to him, I think that he's absolutely a unit worth raising. Pretty much no questions asked. Some of that is because of his own kit in terms of just debuffs and utility he provides, damage reduction, jewel regen, and then just personal damage on the side too. And then some of that is just his own like characteristics that he has. Like He happens to be a thunder unit. He happens to be a greed unit. So there's just units like Meifeng and like the... Orion and um, Long Hao, just units that he can you can pair him with in a team where they're using a memento skill, uh, uh, going for not memento skill, memento leader skill that functions around greed, or if you're just doing like uh, thunder greed buffs that Meifang provides. Overall, he can just fit right into a team that way. He can be good for bosses with his debuffs. 
just overall, I think he's a, a very, very solid unit. So if you happen to get him a bunch from the shards, then I would definitely go ahead and raise him. Okay, next up is going to be, we'll do Mira first. So Mira is one that I am actively working on. I basically went from almost nothing, like she was a unit I wanted to raise, but I could not, but thanks to this event, now I'm, I'm making a little bit of progress. Obviously, it's, she's nowhere close to done, but given that I had zero, <laughs> pretty much, to start with... Yeah, we can go ahead and get her gate 5 right now. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm pretty happy about that. She's... She's... Like, if you look at Mira Nyx as units who are very similar in general as combinations of damage and support, where Nyx leans more towards support and Mira leans towards more damage, I think the changes that she's been given help her out in that role. And then she's got a kill snowball, which is always really, really good, especially if you're using her in stages where there's a ton of enemies, especially if she's able to kill an enemy with her skill that then gives her an a turn immediately and then the next skill doesn't use a cast. That is just excellent. I really like that setup. So, And then on the side, if you need a quicken or an overclock, she can do that too. So I think that in, in if you're looking at her just purely in support terms, she's never going to be as potent as Nyx, but she's also got some damage on the side and she's fire magic, which is also good if you're in a situation where you can't get the whole like em emma i almost said emma but no emma noah and pamela or you don't have them all raised or you just can't fit all three of them into a team then you could consolidate that into a unit like mira and get a lot of mileage out of that okay let's move on to nyx now so i already talked about him a tiny bit but yeah, he's, he's very, very solid. I already had all of his gates maxed before this event even started, so I'm probably going to end up using all of the shards that I got just for the RNG rolls on the Pride Rune. Definitely a good thing if you have nothing else, and especially if a little bit of HP is not going to be huge. Just keep in mind, you can refund the HP, you cannot refund the stat rolls, so that is something to think about. But I absolutely love Nyx. Just, he's got two really good reactives, whether that's dispelling buffs or lowering enemies elemental resistance they, his quicken now doesn't have a cast time so that's himself and one other unit that's really great at the beginning of a map he can also overclock he can do magic res down pretty much an easy unit to slot into not just thunder magic teams not just magic teams sometimes just any team so yeah absolutely i love nix he's one of my favorite units in the entire game okay next up we should move on to adelaide so adelaide is one i have been working on I originally got him with a selector a long time ago when they gave away free Genesis protagonist and it's been kind of a slow thing ever since, but now I'm, I'm really starting to make some headway. Still not all the way there yet, but oh, but let's go ahead and grab his gate 7 while we're at it. I am pretty happy that they gave us a bunch of shards here. And then not only that, he got some decent upgrades, it's nothing too crazy, but a little bit more damage, a little bit more survivability, I'll take it. He's he's always been decent at those things. He's one of those units where he's definitely not really OP, but he is very, very solid. He can be he can be hard to kill depending on the map, depending on the range of the enemies, because he can drain back health. He's got some debuffs, he can do fairly solid damage. He does strike res down, which is comparatively a fairly rare thing to do. He's got really good mobility. If you've got his momento maximum break or broken, you can do uh, a better snowball, helps his jewel economy. And then on top of that, he pairs very well with Melvilli, who is an absolutely amazing support unit, and she'll just straight up boost his damage, and she can also give him jewels and pretty much anything you'd possibly want in a support. So he certainly has that going for him. Let's go ahead and grab the uh, Eraso skill up to 15. There we go. So yeah, I, I think especially because Fire Strike doesn't have too many options. You got like Kamui, of course, and then Fu from the Sprite Trio, who you might have raised just because you got him on the way to getting Voda. And then of course there's Don Terrace, but I think Adelaide's going to perform a little bit better than them. So I definitely think he's worth raising, especially if you find yourself in a spot where you very much need strike damage specifically. Okay, next up is going to be Eulalia. Now, she's an interesting one for me because I've had her, I think, the longest aside from Nimmel for Genesis Protagonist, but I haven't really raised her. Got 100 shards regular, and then I have a little bit more um, Enlightenment shards. So raising her is definitely a possibility. 
but it's it's kind of hard because there's other options for wind missile that are a lot easier to raise. I think she does do some pretty cool stuff in in terms of debuffs, but it, it is a little bit difficult. I especially I was not totally sold on the upgrades that she got in terms of being like she's still very very solid she's the kind of unit where just if the game throws tons and tons of shards at you and your need of of both wind and missile then she'll definitely get the job done but it's it, it's always been an uphill thing for me just because like competition for shards and like not having her memento so not all of that is the fault of eulalia herself but just just happenstance in terms of how my account has progressed so I do think she's solid, it's just I don't know if she is like a really game-changing unit in the same way. But she does have access to Leafa, and so if you pair her with like a Tina, Seda, Eulalia, Leafa team, you, you will get good results out of that. So she definitely can be worth raising. Okay, let's move on to Daphne, another one who I am like just actively working on because I had almost nothing. And then thanks to this event, I'm actually starting to make some headway. Can't quite get her gate 5 yet, but let's go ahead and get those other four. But still, it's progress. Now, I don't think she's going to make as big of a difference as she used to a long time ago, where having that cover mechanic was indispensable it still can be and you may find yourself doing escort missions here and there and then um, units like Vettel and Daphne are really really good for escort missions if you're having trouble keeping the person alive so definitely there's that and then th she may also be really useful in instances where the map has the ability to just massively lower everyone's attack or M attack because she doesn't scale off of those stats then she can still do a decent amount of damage uh, and you can basically get around that mechanic. That's not going to come up often, but when it does, it can be very, very useful. So, in general, sometimes the game doesn't need tanks, but when the game does require a tank, she does a very, very good job at it. And I'm definitely looking forward to having to raise Daphne. If nothing else, she's just a unit I really, really like, so I'm going to pretty much do it regardless. So let's move on to Andex, who is one that, thanks to this event, I now have all of his gates maxed. He is very, very solid. Now, the release of Dios Link makes it so he's not the best in his role anymore, but working together with Dios, they can do quite a bit, especially in instances where you're fighting something like a boss that can target both of them at the same time and trigger both of their reactives. They complement each other very, very well, and doubly so if the enemy is a dark type then you can go ahead and switch the Necromancer sub onto Andex and massively lower their light res and then allow both himself and Dios to do just tons and tons of damage. So definitely very, very good. Just if you have Riza also, then Dios, Andex, Riza, and then a fourth person, depending on what your needs are, that will be a very, very powerful team. So definitely Andex, I think, is 100% worth it, even if you're already good. on. It's weird that he's not favorited, but even if you're already good as, for, as far as Dios goes, just I just consider him a p companion unit to Dios, and you will be very, very happy. Okay, I suppose next up is going to be Nimmel. I do not have a lot to say about Nimmel, because he wasn't that affected by this event, but he's very, very, very strong. He's basically two different elements. He's either Fire Missile or Light Magic. Both are very, very potent. He's got a great, great leader skill. A good memento leader skill for protagonist types. Just overall across the board, he is a very, very strong unit. The, the, the upgrades they made to him was basically a job plus worth of upgrades, as opposed to more minor upgrades for all the rest of the protagonists. So it was just huge. So absolutely unconditionally worth raising for everybody. Everybody's better off with Nimmel. And then finally we get to Ignacio. Now he's a lot more niche. I don't think anybody could really call him a an overpowered unit or, or a really strong unit in any particular way. However, he definitely has some really good functionality. One, really, really good range. That can be very, very useful. You can take advantage of a high position in, in a map and then just be able to hit pretty much anyone. He can do CT denial, which is going to be rarely appreciated, but it may save your life when it is appreciated and maybe a map with chronomancers and they're going to overclock a dude that's got to charge up and is going to come and one-shot you, then you can make the overclock not work. 
He's got some decent CC that is dependent on whether the enemies are human or not. And then he's also got Alchemic Overload. And then he can also detonate Alchemic Overload, which the Oslink can do it too, but it's dependent on him having a reaction. So if you're fighting an enemy that maybe all of their moves ignore reactions, then Dios is not going to be able to detonate it. So you might need to have a manual detonation, with which Ignacio is able to do. So that is a very niche thing. But he's also a dark unit. He'll work with Anaros to boost his damage. You could also use any missile support like Leafa, and it'll help him out there too. So he is far from useless, but he's definitely the kind of unit where you have a very specific use for him in mind in terms of how what he's going to do in a battle. Uh, and then when that works, it'll work very, very well. So as far as whether or not you should raise him, I think it depends entirely on how you're doing for Dark Missile and just the other functions regardless of element and damage type like CT, Denial, and Shield Breaking, and Detonation. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it for covering the protagonist. So, because there wasn't much to talk about banners, um, nonetheless, we got Amane on the way, so that's going to be an exciting week. So, we will cover that soon enough, and until then, I will see you all next time.